Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a parachute purple haze. Um, when I first moved out here, I had a buddy of mine ask me to tie me some purple haze for him. I said, what the hell is a purple haze? Never heard of it. Never heard of it until I moved out to Montana. Turns out it's a really popular fly. Um, I asked him what he, you know, asked him to show me a picture and he showed me. I was like, oh, damn thing is purple. Um, I was like, wouldn't catch me kept throwing one of these, you know. Uh, basically, it's an attractor pattern. They, they tell me that they use them, well, I've, I've seen folks use them through the betas hatches and still catches fish, so I, I don't know, there might be something to it. But anyhow, we're going to tie a purple haze. Me personally, I still have not fished a purple fly. Um, I know a lot of people fish like the chubbies and stuff with purple bodies and everything and do, do really well. I've never really seen, I guess the closest I think I could see a natural, um, in, in the purple realm would be the mahogany duns. I could see where it could potentially be a decent representation, um, but I mean, people catch fish on them, so we're gonna go ahead and put a video together. Maybe one of these days I'll fish one. I don't know, I don't fish many drives anyhow these days, so odds are I probably won't fish any purple haze. But we'll go ahead and get one put together in case anybody wants to tie some of these up for themselves. So, to start on this, we're gonna go with our tail. We're gonna go with, an, this is a probably a 30 year old neck. I'll show you the packaging on it. That's that's the Mets packaging right there. That's old school. I don't know how that thing's still hanging together. But anyhow, we're gonna take and do, I'm just gonna do a, uh, a brown tail on this. I'm not going to mix it with grizzly or anything like that. I'm just going to do a straight brown tail. I know some folks will mix them, uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep these. I'm going to keep this as a straight brown. So anyhow, probably, I don't know, five to seven strands. Lengthen this out. I'm going to go, you can't really see that with my thumb there. I'm going to go slightly longer than the overall length of the hook get that secured into place and then just make some nice clean wraps cleaning everything up on our body there have a nice base for our taper that we're going to start to build with our wings and then we're going to set our thread or we're gonna leave our thread setting right there and we're gonna go into some parachute wings. Um, this is a white parapost. Now it's a size 12, so I'm probably gonna add a little bit of extra on this. I'm gonna take this piece and I'm probably just gonna double this over, seeing that it is a 12. It's a bigger fly in the dry fly world, that is. And then I'm just gonna clean all this stuff up, put everything together. And I'm just gonna run my fingers through there. If you want to, um, to kind of bring everything together a little bit more, you can run that through a comb or um, that comb's probably not good. Probably something a little bit more with a fine tooth thing or fine tooth comb, I should say. And then this is the portion that I want to use right here. That's gonna be my post. Um, so moving back from that, I'm going to tie this in first before I cut it. I'm going to tie this in. I'm just going to set this right like that. One, two. Get a couple of nice clean wraps in there. And then I'm going to stand this up. One, two in front. Get a couple of more wraps to clean everything up slightly. It's starting to stand up a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to take this excess and I want to cut it at an angle going back my hook. So I'm going to lay that down almost flat and trim that down. So there you go. We have a nice clean section. You'll see how this is going to add to our taper as we go back. If you cut that straight up and down, you'll wind up with a bump 
on your body. Cutting that at an angle allows you to get to build that natural taper that you're after on a purple fly. <laughs> Anyhow, let's make a couple more clean wraps right through here. And then I'm going to stand that post up a little bit. You see a lot of folks use, um, on, on a lot of parachute patterns, not, not just um, specific to the purple haze, but a lot of parachute patterns. You'll see folks use um, calf body hair. It's a good material. It, it's a little bit difficult to work with. I don't, I don't really like it all that much. I will use it from time to time, but not very often. I like this pair of post stuff. Pretty easy to work with. You'll get a couple runaways here and there, but for the most part, it, it's a little bit easier to work with. So what I did there is I just built a little stem going up my parachute portion. That's going to allow me to uh, tie my hackles up that stem a little bit, and then I'm going to work it going down. So with the hackles, we'll go ahead and get those tied in right now. These are going to be on the longer side. This is an old, old hackle here, so this is not going to be the cleanest that it could be. I mean, you can see, look at the stem on that hackle right there. That thing's that's, that's pretty dang old there. Come a long way. They've come a long way. So, there's the brown. I want to find a good pair on a grizzly here. I'm, I am going to tie a little bit of a, I'm going to tie a grizzly hackle in here on the parachute portion. I want the grizzly to be a little bit smaller than my brown. So, it may be a size down. It may be like a 16 as opposed to a, or it may be a 14 as opposed to a 12 on the hackle so you can see what I have right there. They're pretty close actually. That brown is a little bit longer. Just clean this up a little bit and trim that off. Now what I want on this is when I'm wrapping my parachute, I, I'm not gonna go the typical package side up and then spin this around like I would on a cat skill style. I want, I want the package side to be down, so when I wrap these, these feathers are going to be pointing up toward the parachute post, not going down into the body. So I'm going to tie, let me, get, let me get the brown in there first. So we're going to go with our package side facing down, and you can see that natural curve right there. You'll see it even more when we start wrapping these in. So there's one. Leave yourself some stem to work with. I want to catch that stem on the opposite side right there. I want to catch that stem on the opposite side. But like I said, leave yourself some stem to work with. So when I stand this up and attach it to my post, I have a little bit of room to start working with to make my first wrap and it's going to be just bare, um, bare stem. So I'm going to stand that up like so. Once again, I'm going to take my grizzly and give myself just a little bit extra to work with. And then we're going to repeat the same process. So we're going to take this one, catch that underneath. and then stand that hackle up right next to the brown. There we go. And then I'm working that up my stem slightly. So how this is going to go, let me, let me secure that a little bit better. I could turn this upside down or I could turn this perpendicular in the vise and it would be a little bit easier to wrap, but 
I'm not gonna worry about that. So anyhow, how this is gonna go is I'm gonna start wrapping my hackle from the top and I'm gonna work it down, okay? That's gonna give me a nice clean parachute. Well, as clean as I can for 30 year old hackle, I guess. Let's get a couple of thread wraps right through there. Everything's looking pretty clean. We've got a nice taper on that body. So now I'm gonna switch over to a purple thread to finish out this fly. So this is 210 uh, UTC. I just wanna get a, just get my thread started here. And then I'm just gonna wrap this to the back Pretty consistent wraps. If you miss a little bit here and there, that's fine. But then I'm just working my way back to the hackle. There's a little bump I'd like to ease out right there. There we go. That hackle moving around is a little distracting. I apologize for that. There we go, just like so. We have a nice clean transition, a nice slender body on that hackle right there. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna go into some UV ice dub. I mean, we're tying a purple fly. Let's just, let's just swing for the fences, huh? So I'm gonna tie in some UV ice dub underneath here. And it actually kind of fills the fly out pretty nice, believe it or not. The, it's, it's some black UV ice stub that I just want to take right through here. And you'll be able to see on that underneath side, it has like some purple properties to it and everything. Pretty neat looking appearance actually. Um, and then I'm just gonna make a couple of clean thread wraps to give me that nice purple look on the body that we're after. And then I'm gonna start with the Grizzly and I'm gonna make some wraps for my parachute. Remember, like I said, starting at the top and working your way to the bottom. And all I want is about three wraps on there. I'm gonna go around and catch this underneath securing that to the post okay so i have that hackle right here up and down is where i have those thread wraps on that post and then i just make my wraps underneath the hackle that i tied in and secured it to that post so we'll go ahead and trim that get it out of your way those dang dogs are gonna drive me nuts out there. Now this one may be a little difficult because it's a pretty rigid feather. And like I said, I wanted this one a little bit longer than my Grizzly. One, two, and we'll grab a third right there. It's slightly longer, going all the way underneath my Grizzly, all the way underneath the brown, securing that to the post. and we'll trim that off. Everything's good there. Everything's setting sort of how we want it. There's a couple of things I'm gonna clean up a little bit. But then to finish this, I'm just gonna whip finish going right around the post once again. So going underneath everything, and I'm not sure which camera's gonna pick this up the best, probably the front one going up underneath everything, going around all my hackle. I don't want to catch any of that. I don't want to trap any of that in place. One, two, there we go. We can trim off this purple thread right there. Look underneath, we've got some nice clean UV in there just adds a little bit of extra flash. 
if you want to you can take and uh, I want to clean some of that up if you want to you can take and treat that thread with a little bit of um, Super glue. Sorry, I was losing my train of thought there. You can treat that with a little bit of super glue on top and it'll kind of prolong the life of this fly. Add a little bit of durability to it. And then I'm just going to take and clean this parachute post up. I want to make a nice clean cut at the top. Some of those fibers I'm going to have to get out of the way there. They don't look too good. And then there's one fiber right here that I, for the brown, where I didn't take quite enough, didn't give myself quite enough stem to work with. Those first couple of wraps that started really shooting up. But I'll clean those things up a little bit and uh, we'll get the picture taken on this one. But this gives you the general idea. You can see from the underneath side, those, those brown fibers wound up being a lot longer than the grizzly, which is how I wanted them. Um, it, it's just a personal preference. It really doesn't matter. Usually when I do this, I do have one color. If I have a multicolored um, parachute hackle wrap, one of them's going to be longer or more pronounced than the other. And I wanted it to be the brown so it would pair up with the with the brown on the tail a little bit more, but it, it honestly does not matter. Um, honestly does not, but there you can see from the underneath side, we've got that nice little bit of uh, black ice dub in there, and then everything cleans up pretty well, and that is your parachute purple haze. Um, for some really old hackle, 20 and 30 years old, this is, I think this is the original Grizzly that I bought back in the day. You can see I chewed through a lot of the top stuff up, up there through like a lot of green drakes and everything over the years. But I think that is the original Grizzly that I bought. And, and I know for sure this is the first hackle, the, the first Mets hackle that I bought um, back in Pennsylvania 30 years ago probably. Anyhow, Long story short, that is the Purple Haze. If you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me. Um, I may do something similar again with some better hackle, um, just to clean it up and make it look a little bit better. But you guys get the overall idea of what we're looking for on this. Thanks as always for watching. We'll catch you next Wednesday.